right, so we're talking about repentance here on Tack Room Devotional. Not a fun topic, but something that's very, very important. Not only important to us, but also important to God, and that's what I want to talk to you about today, the importance of repentance. I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. We uh, see in Acts chapter 17, verse 30, God commands all men everywhere to repent. He commands all men everywhere to repent. So I want to break out a couple groups here to look at when we're talking about who should repent. For instance, the lost are to repent. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 9 verse 13, I did not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. And then again in Luke chapter 13 verse 3 through 5 he says, um, unless you repent you will all likewise perish. So this group, the lost, are to repent. Another group, the backsliders, are to repent. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9, Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. There were carnal Christians in the church at Corinth, and in Paul's first letter, he called upon the church to uh, discipline the guilty. Here in the second letter, he rejoices because the guilty repented. Amen and amen. Another group that we need to look at are the local churches. The local churches are to repent. And we see that in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. Uh, where our Lord sent seven letters to seven local churches. And he called upon five of the seven to repent. The church at Ephesus was to repent because she had lost her first love. The church at uh, Pergamos was to repent because she permitted the doctrine of Balaam to be taught. She permitted the eating and, and of things sacrificed to idols, and she allowed the commission of sexual immorality. The ch church at Thyatira was to repent because she suffered Jezebel to teach and beguile God's servants to commit sexual immorality. The church at Sardis was to repent because she was a dying congregation. The church at Laodicea was to repent because she thought she was rich and didn't need anything. In her opinion, she had already arrived. She did not know that she was neither cold nor hot, but lukewarm. And God said, I'm ready to spew you out of my mouth. The Lord called upon these five local churches to repent or else he would, uh, would remove the lampstand or uh, the la lampsticks and, and they would uh, cease to be a light in the darkness of this world. Amen. The Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, there's repentance. Then I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive them of their sins, and I'll heal their land. Let me tell you, in today's world right now, we Christians need to get to our needs, amen, and repent. The lost are to repent or perish. The backslider is to repent or be disciplined. The local church is to repent or lose its effectiveness in the world lost in sin. Now I want to talk to you about the evidence of uh, repentance. The evidence of repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ is seen in several different stories here in the Bible. For instance, in John chapter 20, verse 24 through 29, uh, we see the repentance of unbelieving Thomas. Thomas would not believe that Jesus had been raised from the dead until he saw the risen Savior was given the opportunity to touch his nailed pierced hands and thrust his hand into his wounded side. Thomas repented, believed, and made his great confession of faith. And here it is, my Lord and my God. Amen. We also see the evidence of repentance uh, in 3,000 who changed their minds, their hearts, and their wills on the day of Pentecost and immediately gave evidence of repentance. Acts chapter 2, verse 41 through 47. Then in Acts chapter 9, verse 1 through 22, Saul of Tarsus experienced uh, repentance when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus and he gave evidence of repentance. Boy, can you imagine Jesus showing up, getting knocked off your... your uh, your horse and, and uh, had an experience like that, well then he, we see the evidence of repentance in his life. Um, Cornelius and his family and his friends repented when they heard the gospel preached by Simon Peter and evidence of uh, repentance followed. Acts chapter 10 verse 24 through 48. 
In Acts chapter 16, verse 26 through 34, we see the Philippian jailer in his house repented when witnessed to by Paul and Silas, and of course the evidence of repentance followed. Repent, repentance is a change of the mind, the heart, and the will. We've talked about that in the past. The proof of repentance is, first of all, turning from trans, your transgressions, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 30, turning to God, which is Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 32, followed by good works, which is Acts chapter 26, verse 20. Hey, I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. We'll uh, tomorrow Saturday, so we'll recap this whole thing. And uh, remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.